five things I wish I knew before becoming an x-ray tech. Let's get started. All right, so let's dive right into it. The first thing that I wish I knew before becoming an x-ray tech is how physically demanding this job can actually be. So as an x-ray tech, we are on our feet for long periods of time. We are lifting patients, we're moving heavy radiology equipment, we are running all over these big hospitals. So although it can be very rewarding, there are times where it feels like you're just getting a workout in. So personally, the physical aspect of the job, I feel, is the hardest part of the job. Um, the mental challenges, of course, are there as an x-ray tech, but those tend to subside the more experience you gain as a technologist because exams become more routine. You, you kind of know what to expect. You've seen these multiple times. So that part becomes easier, but I feel like the physical aspect of it just is always there, depending on the type of work environment you're in. So if you've ever been to an ER and had to wait four to six hours just to get a room or see a doctor, it just shows how busy these ERs are. And for an x-ray tech, if you're working in the ER, you are kind of responsible for all the patients that come through the ER, the ones that have x-rays ordered on them. That means you could be running around with a portable, you could be bringing patients to your x-ray room, help moving them onto your table, moving them back onto the stretcher, taking them back to the room, and it can just be nonstop depending on the type of day you're having. Uh, it can be hit or miss in every hospital setting, but um, a lot of times it can be very demanding and physically exhausting working in the ER and a lot of these major hospitals. Another example could be working in a busy ortho clinic. These ortho clinics tend to double, triple, even quadruple book their patients. So your whole day can just be patient after patient doing specialized x-ray views, such as standing x-rays. For standing x-rays, they tend to be more physically demanding than just normal basic x-rays because you are getting down on a knee to position at times, again, bending over, getting up, running back to the console, taking the picture, coming back, repositioning again that can take a toll on you, especially if you're doing it five days a week. So busy ortho clinics are another example of how exhausting being an x-ray tech can be. All right, so those are just a couple examples of how demanding this job can be at times. Now, I don't wanna scare you away. It's not always this physically demanding. If you're working in something like surgery, if you are doing fluoroscopy procedures, things are way less demanding on the body. There you're using your mind more than your body, which is why I really like those aspects of radiology as well. All right, so let's move on to number two now. So number two, the second thing that I wish I knew before becoming an x-ray tech was how just a two-year radiology degree can be a stepping stone to many other advanced modalities. And this is a really great aspect of radiology, just the fact that you have so many opportunities for advancement. And I've met many techs that have worked 30, 40 years in just general radiography and are very happy and content. I met techs that have worked for a decade and they're like, you know what, I think it's time to move on to another modality and then they'll cross train into CT or MRI. I met new grads that came right out of school that got into an advanced modality such as interventional radiology. So again, it's just really nice to have the opportunity to move on to another modality if you want, or if you're content in x-ray, you really like x-ray, you can stay right where you're at. And I'm even going to throw travel x-ray into the section as well because you can travel as an x-ray tech. You can move all over the country working 13 week contracts. And that is one of the coolest things that I've ever heard. I didn't even know this existed before becoming an x-ray tech. I found out my first year of x-ray school and was immediately hooked. So the fact that you have all these advancements opportunity in radiology, you can travel the country if you want. You can even get into IT as a PACS administrator and get into management administration. There are many different avenues you can go with just a two year degree. So again, one of the really cool aspects of becoming an x-ray tech. All right, so moving on to point number three is that this job is more than just taking pictures, more than just taking x-rays. I'm a photographer. Yes, I can see that. Before becoming an x-ray tech, I thought this job was just about taking basic x-rays. Um, if you hurt your wrist and go to the ER, the x-ray tech is a person that takes pictures of your wrist. That's all I thought it was. But there is so much more to becoming an x-ray tech. We do procedures, we work in surgeries, we collaborate with doctors, nurses, many healthcare providers in our systems that we're working. And it is just, it's very mind blowing once you actually get into school and realize how many different parts or how many different um, aspects radiology is in a hospital system. But if you're an aspiring student, this is why it's really important to shadow, not just once, but maybe shadow more than once, especially in a hospital setting. Because I remember when I shadowed, the first thing I saw was just an x-ray tech, take a couple pictures here and there, and that was it. I did try to ask questions, but I didn't really grasp the whole um, idea of what radiology is all about. Um, I went to another hospital and 
I actually saw procedures. I saw the techs go up to surgery with lead aprons. And I was like, whoa, this is way different than what I saw over here, just shooting basic x-rays. So this is why it's really important to um, do your due diligence to shadow at maybe more than one place to really get an idea of radiology because we aren't just the ones taking your x-ray in the ER. We are also the ones taking your x-rays in surgery cases. We're doing fluoroscopy cases. We are in so many different um, settings when it comes to the hospital. And if you've ever had an x-ray yourself and you just say you're getting your wrist x-ray, you put your wrist down, they just point a tube over, open the light field and shoot it. And you're like, oh, that's pretty easy. I could do that. Yeah, well, there's a lot more to it than just kind of pointing and shooting. And if you're planning on becoming a student, that's where you kind of go behind the scenes and see all the nitty gritty of it. That's where you learn the radiology, physics, the biology, the intense medical terminology, the angles, the projections to get these certain exams. It is a lot more than what it looks like on the surface level. So you definitely need to take your studies very serious if you are a student planning on becoming an x-ray tech. All right, so moving on to point number four, and that is communication is key. Patient interaction is a major part of the job. It's incredibly important to communicate effectively and show your soft skills when working with patients because a lot of times patients are in distress. They might have a broken bone and they're in a lot of pain. You need to kind of move them a little bit to get these certain x-rays and you have to earn their trust rather than just pick them up, put a plate under them when they have a broken humerus or something like that. So soft skills are incredibly important. You want the patient to feel comfortable or at least as comfortable as possible. You need to talk through the exam with the patient and say, hey, I'm gonna move you just a little bit this way. I'll be as gentle as possible. We just have to get these couple pictures so the doctors can see exactly what's going on, that sort of thing. Just being caring and empathetic while you're working with your patient can truly make a huge difference on their experience. So if you are someone that doesn't like face-to-face -face interaction, if you'd rather be behind a computer all day, or if you are someone that isn't the most empathetic or compassionate, then being an x-ray tech might not be for you. All right, so let's move on to our last point, and that is as an x-ray tech, continuing education never stops. This career is not a one and done deal, meaning you don't just take your board's exam, your registry and pass, and then you never have to do anything again in regards to education. No, as an x-ray tech, you are required to do 24 CEU continuing education credits every two years. An example of the continuing education credits is just this radiology journal right here. Um, these can be sent to you or you can do them online. And it just has articles that you go through and then take quizzes at the end of them. So if this is one credit, then I would need to do 24 of these in a two year period. And we are also required to kind of recertify every 10 years, meaning we have to take a test similar to the boards or the registry that we took when we graduated. But um, not to scare you, this test you can't fail. The ARRT just looks at certain sections that maybe you need a little bit more help in, need more refreshers in, and then they'll just assign you um, extra continuing education credits for that biennium. So again, as a radiologic technologist, we are always learning, whether that be continuing education, whether that be learning on the job. Um, if you think about it, medicine is always advancing, so we are getting new technologies, new procedures. If you are working as an x-ray tech, you will get new equipment, you will get new softwares that you'll have to learn, you'll have to adapt to, and I think that's a really great aspect of this career in this job because it just it always keeps your mind active. You're always learning rather than just doing the same monotonous thing every day, like a lot of other careers. No, um, there are so many advancements, even, though, even over the last 20, 30 years in radiology that just kind of keep you up to date, you keep learning, and it's a really great part of the field that kind of keeps you going, kind of keeps you looking forward to see what's, what's gonna come next, what's gonna be the next new um, incredible piece of equipment, what's gonna be the next procedure that um, they didn't do 20 years ago that we start to do now. Things like that. Just a really cool aspect of radiology overall. All right, so let's wrap this video up now. Those are the five points or things that I wish I knew before becoming an x-ray tech. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, please like and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them down below. I will get back to you and keep an eye out for more videos to come. With that said, take care. You guys have a good one. See ya.